No devil is permitted to invade your home. No devil is permitted to invade your health. I silence hostilities now. Listen, do not be afraid and don't buckle. I see God putting you in high places. Grace for earlier establishment. It is done. Let's give Jesus a big hand. You may please be seated. Thank you. And um, you want to welcome someone to church and just give a word of encouragement and say good morning. Good to see you. Um, you look amazing. If your neighbor is not saying it, ask the neighbor, well, what have I done? So let me show you something so that you can have clearer understanding. Um, 2 Corinthians 10. Um, let's start reading from verse 3 for context. 2 Corinthians 10 from verse 3 for context. Now look at this. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. The word after the flesh means that. It doesn't mean that um, the, the, the layman interpretation of this is that um, we are not fighting flesh and blood. No, no, that's, that is deeper than that. It means we are not using fleshy strategies. Okay? Very important. Why? Verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So, um, thank God we have military officers here, so they know what I'm talking about. There are tactical ways of fighting. So, for instance, when you see nations fighting themselves, it's not just some people running around with guns and trying to shoot the next person they see who is wearing blue or the person wearing red. No, 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 no. Warfare is, it involves techniques. And it involves information. So one of the things you want to do to be strategic is, for instance, to blow up the supply line of your enemy. You want to check, where are they bringing ammunitions to? Where are they bringing food to? Okay? If we can cut the supply line, um, you leave them stranded. There's a Chinese proverb that says, know yourself and know your enemy, and you will never lose a battle a day in your life. I don't know it in Chinese. I'm not going to tell you about Chen something. And you go and check online now. They say, see your pastor. <laughs> Thought I saw a video like that. The young man just bamboozled everybody. I say, hey, Nigerians, they type the thing. You know, yeah, everything accrues. <laughs> Nations need to study Nigeria. How we bring fun out of pain. Yeah. It is the character of the nation. And the support system of Nigeria is unbelievable. Another Nigerian just... I think there's something unique about this nation on the face of the earth. Let's give Jesus a big hand. We might not be where we are going as a nation, but we are clearly on our way there. We're clearly on our way there. In fact, it is said that any country you get to and you don't find a Nigerian, run. Nothing works there. <laughs> As long as something is working there, you've... the signs we are seeing now are clear signs that times of refreshing are coming back. We are just starting. It will get better. No nation is ever built through politicians. Nations are built through entrepreneurs. They are the ones who build the nation. Is that okay now? All the works of your hand, be strong at what you do, Become the best at it and keep striving. Things will work. Investors are coming back. They are coming back. I'm excited. I'm excited. Are you excited? Are you sure? Let's give Jesus a big hand. But if you look clearly, you can see a thorough example of Ishmael and Isaac in Nigeria. 
Nigeria is the place on earth as we speak that the move of God is most strongly felt. Nigerian ministers are a blessing all over the world. You won't believe it. All over the world. Nigerian worshippers are a blessing all over the world. It was not like that before. But you will also notice that the devil also piqued interest in this nation for the direct opposite. So that the time comes, you don't even know which is strongest, Ishmael or Samuel or Isaac. And I said to you on Tuesday that the devil likes to always insist that the father of Isaac will be the father of Ishmael. He likes to always insist that when good things are better through you, the opposite of it is also better through you. I was giving the topic yesterday, self-sabotage. That's what it means. To build and to also destroy. One of the things I want to open your eyes to see today is to show you an aspect of the story of Ishmael that you don't even know. To let you know that when Sarah said to Abraham that go into Agar and sleep with her, what the devil did was a don't deal. It was deeper than what you think. Turn your Bibles there. Genesis chapter number 16. Genesis 16. If you are there, say amen. Now, I started reading from verse 1, and I want us to pay attention to this. Now, Sarai, Abraham's wife, bare him no children. And she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Agar. And Sarai said to Abraham, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, Go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of who? Sarah. And Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Agar a maid to Abraham, to the Egyptian. After Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband Abraham to be his wife. So it was not a one of. It was not one night stand. Be his wife. <laughs> and the old man, I like it like that. Men, you know what this means. The only way he can accept is that he had thought about it. He had looked at a guy. I said, a guy is fine. We don't know where Sarah saw him looking at her. And that's why she suggested the girl specifically. But somehow, when she said, go into her, it was a dream come true. He agreed. <laughs> Amen. I've seen people try to justify polygamy and say, even monkeys, they, they have different mates. Even cats, they have different mates. Are you a monkey? <laughs> you are not a monkey. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now look at it. Let's, let's jump a, a bit. Verse 4 now. And he went in unto Agar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Now I, I, I could talk to you. Let me tell you something. Many of us here work with different establishments. If you are going to last in any organization, you must know how to manage success. Yeah. When you get the results your predecessors are not getting, there is a way you celebrate. Are you following what I'm saying here? Yes, there is a way you... Let them be the one to say, ah, you know, it's our win. Listen to... People can say, ah, congratulations, congratulations. But what they're actually saying is that, let's find a way to get this guy out of this place. You know, David killed Goliath. 
It was the wind for the nation. But the women began to sing. Ah, Saul has killed his thousands. And David tens of thousands. And David too was dancing. When they are singing the downfall of your boss, you don't dance. Are you following what I'm saying? Those who are in politics know this. Oh. One powerful tool for trade in politics is loyalty. Yes, sir. Ah. Let me. Okay. So the moment she conceived, started looking at Sarah, barren woman. Look at her. This, 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 that. And verse 5. And Sarah said unto Abraham, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my handmaid into your bosom. And when she saw that she conceived, I was spice in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and you. <laughs> we may, we may. Don't be today. <laughs> we may. <laughs> Why will you start what you can't finish? <laughs> Why will you start what you can't? Don't be you. Take the girl. Go there. Say, you go and marry the girl now. Now your eye can't take it. <laughs> My wrong be upon you. God judge between us. Look at, look at the game. <laughs> Eighty-six year old woman carrying like a child. She was the other No, I can't imitate people that cry. But people have cried in my presence a few times. <laughs> Before, as a pastor, people are crying. I'm holding laughter. Why are you crying? <laughs> I'm fighting it. Today. Why are you crying? Go and eat. <laughs> you don't have money. Buy up and cook and start from somewhere. You settle down. Life is not that deep. Oh. <laughs> eat first, my brother. <laughs> eat first. <laughs> no matter the problem you have, even if you are owing people, Nigeria is owing more. Eat first. <laughs> fact. Your life and your health first. What did I say? Your life and your health first. This one you can't sleep at night. There's somebody somewhere waiting to collect your phone if you die. They'll go and sell it at GSM Village. Don't die when you can live. You know what was crying? And they sent a girl out. Maltreated her. Look at it. Verse 6 now. But Abraham said unto Sarah, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do with her as you like, as it pleaseth you. And when Sarah dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to shore. And he said, Agar, Sarah's maid, whence comest thou? And whither thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarah. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I return to your mistress. And submit your seven thy hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with a child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath seen your what? Affliction. <coughs> and he will be a wild man, and his hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord that spake to her, Thou God, seest me. For she said, Have I also looked after him that seeth me? Two things you need to pick from this. Let's pick two applications. Look at this one. Please pay attention. I want to teach. Why did Agar run? Affliction. Right? What did the angel say to her? Go back and submit to Sarai. That instruction was not about Sarai. That instruction was about the child. There is a form of pregnancy you must not take away from certain atmospheres. No matter how angry you are, Eger, understand that your hunger has no economic value. Go back. That place where there is hardship, there's also something side by side, the blessing. 
Did you notice that the same blessing that was given to Abraham was the blessing that was given to Ishmael? I will multiply your seed that they will not be numberable for multitude. You know what that means? Ishmael entered the blessing before Isaac. He did. So, Ishmael might be not of faith, but he was blessed. The same pronouncement that was given to Abraham, same pronouncement that was given to Ishmael, but there were contradictions. He said he's going to be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hands against him. Those were the contradictions. Okay? Let me tell you something. There's a reason why the Bible said that anger lies in the bosom of fools. Are you following what I'm saying? Let's assume now. You are angry with your wife. They serve you dinner. You didn't eat. Who will have a long night? The best form of revenge is to eat first. <laughs> eat. Because how do you get angry and go and hurt yourself? You got angry with your husband, you carry your pillow and go and sleep on the floor. <laughs> Mosquito wants to finish you at night, but pride will not allow you to go back. <laughs> anger has no economic value. Uh, yes, sir. Pocket the anger and be strategic. Yes, go back. Are you following what I'm saying? Oh, yes, sir. Oh, yes. Go and check. It's poor neighborhoods that they fight. I was telling you guys yesterday. Poor neighborhood. You will never see street fight in Banana Island. <laughs> Talk to me now. Somebody just wake up in Banana Island and say, Ara Dubo, Enyele, get. <laughs> Some of you now, your mind has gone to Zazu. See, 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 see. We plead the blood of Jesus in this church. <laughs> I mean, you, 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 will, you will find. In fact, people will move to those kind of neighborhoods for the quality of the neighbor. I'm, I'm in the wrong place. Huh? People go to an expensive neighbor because you don't know who your neighbor will be. But the people who are living face by face, you don't greet each other. Because this one already knows the neighbor is somebody. But it does not yet appear to this one what you shall become. It takes wasting relationships to be small in life. It takes wasting relationships, wasting access, wasting quality people. And most times you may meet people of impact when they don't look like it. Honor all men, sir. Honor all men. Honor all men. Honor all. That is the way to be strategic. Honor all men. There was a small girl that helped name man out of leprosy. She was not a prophet. She was a servant. But she knew how to reach a prophet. The girl was so connected was the king that called Elisha. Yes. You will not be small in life. Yes. So the devil wanted to seal the fate of, of Abraham. Of, 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 of Abraham. Ishmael was blessed, but he needs to grow under the covering of the blessing. Yes, so he said, carry the child back. Let me beg you in the name of Jesus Christ. You want to keep seeing the hand of God like never before? Treat people well. You can't claim to love God you don't see and despise people that you see. Treat people well. Everyone with their own honor. Every, not for what they have to offer, but for whose image they are. God's image. Honor all men, sir. The Bible says we should not be wearing well-doing, also in entertaining strangers, for by this many have entertained angels. 
without knowing. There are men like angels and angels like men. It could be that one day that you just lose your temper at work, that you will miss the result of the prayers you have prayed for 10 years. Just that one moment. The devil makes sure that you get to the peak of frustration when you are closest to your breakthrough. Just whenever you are about losing your temper, retreat. Because there's something you're about to lose. Are you following what I'm saying here? So anger lies in the bosom of who? Fools. Why? Because it is true wisdom that the house is built. True understanding is what? Established. True knowledge, the chambers are filled with pleasant riches. So, a fool can't build. Because he's not wise. It takes wisdom to build and to have men building with you. You can't do everything. You must have the character and the affinity to accommodate and magnet those who can support other areas. And they may not be perfect. Sometimes the most imperfect people carry the greatest blessings. If you look at them, ah, the way this guy talks, I can't stand him. <laughs> but I must be emotionally intelligent enough to recognize what he stands for. This is not a way to endorse treating people wrong. It is a way to be smart. Say loud and clear, I refuse to be a fool. Say it again, I refuse to be a fool. Now, not just was Ishmael blessed. You know, Ishmael was born out of the covenant. But Ishmael did not die out of the covenant. He became part of the covenant. Genesis 17. Genesis 17. Are you learning something? Now, look at this. Let's start the reading from verse 22 downwards. I'm, I'm taking you on a journey, okay? So the teaching tool I'm using today is, I'm taking you on a journey and I need you, if you follow the journey, you'll know where we are coming to. Are you there? Are you there? Genesis 17, let's start reading from verse 22. And he left off talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the self same day as God said to him. The circumcision is the sign and the seal of the covenant. So he brought Ishmael in. The illegitimate became legitimate and blessed. So what's the hope for Isaac? What's the hope for Isaac? Now, look at this. I said something in passing on Tuesday that there's a reason why when Isaac came, that was when God to deal with the roots of Ishmael that will catch up with you in future, kill Isaac. Not kill Ishmael. God will never allow you anchor your faith on what he has given you but himself. Yes, sir. Yes. So when what he has given you takes his place in your life, you have made the resources a source. Yes. Yes. It is going to destroy you. And that's why God gives instruction. Many instructions are so that we can be consecrated to him. And that's why God, look at the emphasis. It looks like the way a woman will talk. Go and sacrifice Isaac, your only son Isaac, whom you love. So God is saying, you have one now that has taken my place. 
Let it go. Let me give you an illustration. Some, you know, there's a way. To, I'm showing you today what happens when you bet Ishmael first. I'm going there. Now look at this. There's a way. Somebody, maybe in early days of your life, you have made mistakes. Maybe even have children out of wedlock. And there's a way the hand of God brings you up and give you a brand new beginning and give you a new start. There's a way, if care is not taken, pride can still catch up with you there. That you see people who are going through what you have gone through and your story can't heal them, rather you are judging them. That good Isaac is becoming toxic. Your new found holier than thou will have to climb the altar and die. Except a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. There's something called overcompensation. Oh, I've waited all this long for this. Now God has given me. Ah, this is it. Oh, nobody can collect it from me. Ah, I found this. You will overcompensate and drive yourself to death. There are people who are not going to clubs in the days they were struggling. They would never drink alcohol. It was not their thing. They, they are not night callers. They don't do women. They, don't do, they are just simple people. But there's a way money meets you and when there's no purpose, it starts destroying you. Let me tell you something. Jesus gave an illustration of three things that will test the strength of every building. He said, a wise man built his upon the rock. He said, then commit the rain, then the flood, then the wind. Hmm? The wind is contrary opinions, yeah. doctrines. Yeah. The rain is also something that checks your building. The rain, there are blessings from the Lord. Isaiah 55 verse 10. says, as the rain and the snow will not return back to heaven, but it makes the earth bring forth blood and flourish. Listen to this. Oh. It means even good things will check your structure. The rain that you have not built capacity for is what becomes flood. Rain is coming. Build capacity for it. It becomes flood. If the rain can't carry the building away because you fail to build capacity, the flood will. Good things can become curses. Sometimes we ask for what you don't know what it feels like to be there. Do you know what one billion naira feels like in your account? If care is not taken, the fellow can just get up and say, Ajik Jaga. Ah. <laughs> Are you with me? Yes, can you just say, Ah, I, I, just, I just feel like, say, say, I, do, I just feel like, I just feel like, I just feel like misbehaving. I, I just call his friend. I say, Where do they sell the most expensive catfish in Abuja? From that day, the fellow stopped negotiating. Mm. Money in the hands of a waster. Yes, sir. There are many sins you are not committing because you can't afford it. Yes, sir. You are not that nice. Yes. You are just broke. <laughs> and that's why, listen to what I'm saying. When you see men that God has blessed and they are still sin, honor them. Yeah. Even if they are not pastors, they know something you don't know, sir. I've seen pastors who won loto. I don't know how a pastor got there. Won loto. And shot the church. He has collected his reward. He has finished his ministry. He has heard the voice, welcome, thou good and faithful servant. One loto. Things are happening, sir. There's a pastor somewhere, as we speak now, that has long lists. You know, I didn't know what that thing was. It was NYC family house. They said this guy just came to join family as a pastor. I said, how are you doing? Yeah, pastors, I honor you. Good to see you. And all that. We'll see now. I notice every time I go to their room, you always have that long list. Always checking. And when there's football match, it's painted differently. I mean, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I didn't know. I just sorry. <laughs> pastor is doing Baba <laughs> Religion stinks. Yeah. It stinks. Yeah. You must find God. You must find God. Now, listen to what I'm saying. God saw that the emergence of Isaac 
has entered into Abraham's head. Let me speak from my place as a prophet. While we cry to God for a new Nigeria, I believe it. I believe it will be in our lifetime. I believe we are going to see the reputation of this nation change. I believe that we are going to see things turn around. Our men and women will no longer die within our walls. Blood will not flow on our streets. I believe. But I have more fear for the new Nigeria than the old. And my fear is because of overcompensation. Prosperity is a responsibility. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is. Will we still obey rule of law, freedom of speech, but there's no control? Look at social media platform. Anybody can insult anybody's father. Ha. Huh. Young people should come into power, I believe. But being young doesn't mean you are wise. And being young doesn't mean you have new mentality. You can be young and up here. You are as old as Methuselah. Don't use age to cover face. Study and go far. Forget about the nonsense. I don't want to talk. Just... Are you following what I'm saying here? I believe things will change. But what can we undo it as a nation? There are nations in Africa. They became worse after they got their independence. Man was designed to be under some rule by all means. The moment there's no rule, that's real bondage. There must be something. Imagine you going to school and they told you that do exam when you like, go to lecture, you will never graduate. True? Yes. By now, many of you will still be in part one with three children. Part one, sir. Maybe you not even have YX results by now. But because something puts you under, something puts you, even if you don't like the lecturer, you, you know, you must come for his lecture. I had one terrible lecturer. When he's talking, people are talking behind, he will face the three people in front. You just talk to them, so you understand this, this, this. <laughs> Till he will finish the lecture. <laughs> and the assignment that will carry 10 marks, that's how I will tell them. So this, this equation, this, this, this. Uh, my God. <laughs> God help you. There's one of us, be amongst them. As they finish, I'll just carry the book and left. <laughs> Cover with a tie. Them. <laughs> listen, oh, and listen good. I know many of us are trusting God for when good times will come. But have you developed capacity to handle Isaac? Because the only way Isaac can be handled is that Isaac climbed the altar. Yes. That pool must die. Yes. That is where real life starts from. That pool must die. Imagine, just get a call. No, 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 no. This is it. You have been appointed as this and that to the president. The first statement is, ah, that our church is too far away. <laughs> Are you half cow? <laughs> you see that prosperity has a way of bringing its own suggestions. You just look at your wife. I said, ah, she's not that fine again, no. <laughs> what are you talking about? You are called husband. Mean that you are a farmer. The quality of your garden is a reflection of your sense. So what are you talking about? It's a reflection. And that's why the criteria to being a man of God, a bishop, First Timothy 3, is that take care of your own home first. Isaacs are not simple to be managed because Isaac can invade your heart. You are more sane when you bet Ishmael. Your head is more correct when you have contradictions. That's the truth. Even if you don't want to pray, if a landlord message you now, you have two weeks to leave my house, you pray. You just have a way of loving God. 
an unknowing God. Imagine somebody who has flight fright. Now flying. Oh Lord, I just want to worship you. There's none like you in all the earth. My life, they are in your hands. Who is like unto thee, thou most high God? As the plane shakes, say, oh Lord, I love you. I love you. As the plane lands, it's back again <laughs> to the vomit. Sometimes we have shown to God that we are better off small. That's the problem. A man can be small for his mercies and yours forever. Because he's better preserved small. May God bless you and may your head be correct. Yeah. Oh, they, they are not saying the amen well. Yeah. May God bless you and you may your head be correct. Yeah. May you be a priest in your home. Yeah. May the hand of God strengthen you. Yeah. Now, sit down and let me talk to you for a while. There's nothing pleasurable out there. Nothing. Oh, that your children long to be like you. You don't have to be a pastor. With integrity of heart, presence in their lives. Presence in their lives. That this week, I'm going to go out to a park with my children. Let's play. Let's. That's real fun, sir. That's real fun. That's real fun. One of the ways the devil is hurting the society is through dysfunctional families. I'm coming back to a dysfunctional background. Now, I'm coming back. I'm about to teach on from dysfunctionality to functionality. Woo. Amen? That's why I'll be teaching how to marry someone who is from a dysfunctional background. How to love the person and how to bring the person out. I see people here with the grace for early establishment. But make sure your foundation is strong. Make sure your foundation is the moment certain kind of result comes. Your, friend, your cycle of friends change. The kind of suggestions one are giving is strange. And that is why I make sure that every relationship I've made at every level of my life, they are there intact to keep me sane. I have my friends that we're executives, campus fellowship together, and we have our WhatsApp group. We're having a conversation. It's been so so and so years that we have left campus. Let's have a get together. Let's meet again. It is very easy for me to say, you know I'm the busiest amongst you, but no. I need to go there. You know, when we're talking and one of them said, let's pay so and so amount to bring so and so hotel. Ah, I'm like, hmm. But Listen, I will need to go there yes, and stay in that place to remember where God took me from. Yes, sir. One of my friends right on campus was getting married and he called me, I think two years ago or last year. <clears throat> and he said, Apostle, I want you to come and be my best man. I have meetings. My, anybody who knows my calendar knows that I'm booked in 2025. I said, I'm coming. His family members could not believe. Apostle Lazarus is coming to be your best man. Drive to this village and come. I went. Because these things keep you. See, there are structures you put in place to manage your heart. Hmm. To manage your heart. Make sure. There are things I do. Like going back to the old houses we have lived. And enter. And say, I remember when God was speaking to me in this room. I remember. I remember when God was saying this to me. Now we are beginning to see the beginning of what he said. But I remember. Don't cover your whole tracks. So you will not be a dog who can hear the whistle of the hunter. The memory of where God took you from will keep you humble. Don't be quick to cut people off arrogantly. They are not in my level and my status. When God lifts you, it is your duty to lift them up. It is to support. The lady that was my gen sec while I was on campus, her husband called me. I said, I posted this, this, this. I said, listen, on the account of your wife, I follow every details about your ministry. You preach so, so, and so, topics, so, and so, and so. 
so and so, this so and so, so. I follow everything. I know what you are doing. Just put this in place, put that in place. You are good. He said, I want to come and preach for me. I said, you will never call me twice. My flight, hotel and everything is on me. I will show up. Don't, sir. Don't ever make God regret why he left you. Don't. We do this for heart management. Our apostle wants to invite you, come and preach for us. But this place, sir, is not a place that your kind comes to. It's where two or three are gathered. Who is my kind? If two or three are gathered and God said he's there, who am I not to be there? What do you mean? Let's go. Say, we don't have microphone. Come, I'm coming. Human beings are there. Yes. I'll come. There are places I go to preach. I don't bother them with flight. Don't worry. I'll fly myself. They're just starting. Somebody say heart management. Come on, say it again, say it again, say it again. Is there anyone here who remembered where God took him from? Huh? Is there anyone here? You remember, you remember, you remember, you remember? Can we shout, thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus! Oh, yes. Thank you. It is not because we are good, sir. It is not because we are the best. It is his mercy. It is his mercy. The race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Nor food to the wise. Nor bread to men of understanding. But time and chance happens to all of us. I'm a product of Kairos, not wisdom. Oh, Apostle Lazarus, you are wise. Forget about it. You've not heard people. You've not heard people. You've not heard people. It is of the Lord's mercy, sir. That's why we can't boast. It is of the Lord's mercy. Can we say it again? Just will show. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 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 Now, let me give an encouragement, everyone. Please be seated. When you get home today, just hold hands with your family hmm? and remember. There are things God told the Israelites. Do this for ordinances. Eh? Keep this feast to remember the day death and destruction passed through Egypt, but you were exempted. Okay? Sometimes not celebrating your birthday is a way to be ungrateful because you remember God. Last year I was not here, but now I'm here. Don't say, don't celebrate me. What's there to be? Mm, stop that. That's not humility. God has kept you. Is that not what you have celebration? It is. It is. You may not be where you want to be, but you are not where you used to be. Be grateful. I still have primary school friends in my life. And when I see them, I don't pretend not to know them. Now, people that see in the crowd, I say, ah, I, I know you from somewhere. Forget about for now, you they speak Nigerian English. Even from where you take them. When I meet my people, it doesn't matter. Hey, my G, how you doing? That's life, sir. That's life, sir. That's life, sir. The purpose of being ahead is to make way for others. That's the purpose. To go and clear the path. I see God placing on you the grace of leadership. Yeah. I see God placing on you the grace of leadership. Yeah. I see God placing on you the grace for leadership. Yeah. You will lead the next generation with ease. Yeah. You will lead the next generation in your field. Yeah. You will lead the next generation without stress. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Many will seek to be like you. There's grace for leadership, sir. There's grace for it. Please be seated. Please be seated. We do these things for heart what? Management. Ah! I took my pastors to the house I was living when this church started. We entered. There was another tenant there. Ah! I said, this was my room. This was my room. I, I have things I wrote on the wall. With Byron. Not Lazarus lived here. 
No, 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 no. When there? Ah, Olua. I remember we were three that wanted to get the house. One entered and said, I'm out of here. <laughs> then the other lady said, if the pastor is here, I'm going to be here too. So she paid. We paid 6,000 naira per year. 6K. Mm. 6K per year. So I paid for two years. That was some familiar. Abuja agents. Two years. <laughs> but they know after one year, they will not see you again. It was a lot. What do you mean? That money. Ah. No bathroom. You make sure the other neighbor, the pan they have constructed, they are not inside. Then you quickly enter. Then you get the wrapper to cover the door. Go help you breeze blow. <laughs> Once breeze blow <laughs> on your own. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> what is asking not about the toilet? It's your business. <laughs> you find space. What do you mean? You calculate your boils. There's a time that is ungodly to feel. <laughs> We are the one now saying that I don't like this restroom. That was where God took us from. Yes, sir. Many of you may not be familiar with what I have just described. Thank God for that silver spoon. Oh. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank Him for that silver spoon. Say, I, I, are you serious? You mean you lived in that condition? Oh, yes, I lived in that condition. And we are meeting here. <laughs> it is the glory of God. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Glory to God. Oh. Mm. So, as things begin to change, don't over-embrace Isaac. Understand that it's a sacred trust. It's a sacred trust. Don't overcompensate. That with all the things I've suffered, now I must enjoy for all the years I've suffered. Get me a bag of salt. That's what I want to eat with. You'll kill yourself. You'll kill yourself. God is going to give you the wisdom to manage abundance. He will give you the understanding to manage abundance. Because sometimes what you call abundance is relative to your vision. If the vision becomes bigger, that's more. True or not true? It's relative to your vision. Relative to your vision. Now, there are people in the Bible that betted Ishmael first. That is, their life began from the opposite side. You look at them. Ah! Let me, let me say some things. Let me beg us. And let me say this for the record. One of the ultimate signs that we have found Christ is that we are loving and lovable. We have compassion. Are you following what I'm saying? It's not by carrying the biggest Bible and arguing online. You know, there are people who argue online who have no ministry. They never get distracted. It's not by that. It's love. Let me share a story with you. And I'm just going to keep it as a neutral story. You know, in this work of ministry, I've had to weep several times. Because when I hold people's hands, I'm not going to leave you till we finish, till we succeed. So one time, I got a call. I said, Pastor, your daughter is pregnant. I broke down. I wept. But I remembered that there are very few people that can be in her shoes and be saved. 
father mistakenly impregnated a girl in secondary school. Grandma insisted the woman must abort. She tried, it didn't work. They gave birth to the girl. Father ran, move on with his life. Mother ran, move on with her life. And she was left with grandma. Both sees as the reward for iniquity. After school, nowhere to go. No family to turn to. Nobody to say, this is my daughter. Welcome home. Do you know what that feels like? When we teach people like that and bring them out, they say we are motivational speakers. My God. Who do you think Jesus is? Do you know Jesus of the Bible? Do you know him? The enemy of revival are Christians, not Muslims. Do you know who Jesus is? Are you aware that there are people now that we don't have messages for in the body of Christ? We don't. Somebody asked me, what motivates you to teach things you teach? I said, while I was going through the problems I went through in life, I could not find messages for my kind. And I said, once I come out, nobody who is my kind will struggle to find message. You may know what it means to finish from home. From, from school and go back home. Even if the home is not too nice. Father and mother, they are there. There are those that they have to hang around campus. And sometimes there's no money. So, people who know their condition, pray on them. And, you know, when we preach in church, it's holier than thou. Everybody fell from the sky. And people are going through things, sir. People are going through things. Don't join the bandwagon. People have no idea. They say, he doesn't put, he doesn't mention, he doesn't quote scriptures when he speaks. He doesn't quote scriptures. I have received over 200 Muslims' decision from video clips. I want to give my life to Christ. You are the one who is not hearing Jesus. They heard. They heard. They didn't just hear. They saw Jesus. They saw him. They saw him. They saw him. If you start meeting people here, you see people who have not been to church in nine years. Everybody did not drop from the sky, sir. It is possible that your life began from the opposite side. Look at the man that was on the right-hand side of Jesus. He had been a thief for as long as he can remember. But Jesus never said, you mean you have stolen all your life, now you are here, and you are now thinking you enter heaven. God punish you there. <laughs> Jesus never said that. Jesus said today, you will be with me in paradise today. Today. That is the Jesus of the Bible. Oh, that the world will know him. If you have issue with church, it's not Jesus you have issue with. It is somebody who has misrepresented him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the reason why you had that issue is so that from that pain, you can decide to represent him better. Yes, so that somebody else will not misrepresent him again. That's the Jesus of the Bible. He met the woman in John 4, who was by the, pool, by, by, by the river, by the well of Samaria. The woman, her life had been bad, sir. Marry this one, this one. Marry that one, marry this one, marry that one, marry this one. Say, the one you are with now is not your husband. Jesus never said, you see your life. You see your life. You see your life. You're kind. My blood, no fish save now. <laughs> May you just go free. Wait, don't spoil, finish. <laughs> he didn't say that. He never said that. Everyone Jesus met, he lifted them. Yes. Give me that scripture, John 4. Let's go to from verse 12. Ah, my God. My God, my God, my God. John 4, if you are there, say amen. amen. Now, let me jump a bit. You can see how bad religion was. Our first response is, how, how will you, being a Jew, ask for water? Jews don't associate with them. We are holy people. We are going to heaven. Are you aware that the parable 
in John, Matthew 25 of the ten virgins. The ten, that, the five that were locked out, were not locked out because they didn't have oil. They were locked out because he didn't meet them. Yes. What do you need oil for? The lamp. Yes. What do you need lamp for? Light. Who is the one coming? The light. Your lamp was useless. Trust him. Those who didn't give. What is the principle of the kingdom? It is in giving we multiply. Yes, sir. When they came, the door was already shut. Yes, sir. The essence of that parable was not to show their inadequacy, but to show their unbelief. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, unbelief. Somebody can feel I'm too bad. Jesus can't even save me anymore. Says who? What was the worst you've done? You killed. So? He died so that you will not know what torment means. Are you following what I'm saying? Let me jump a bit. John chapter number 4. Now look at it. Let's go to reading from verse 16. Jesus said to her, Go and call your husband and come either. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Let me, let me tell you. You see, forensic prophecies like this, you see that Jesus never did for the multitude. Let me tell you, let me warn. You know, it's because Nigeria is still bad that I can call somebody out, camera is on the person, and say, you, you be witch. Say, I know be witch. You. The prison is getting gradually closer to the pulpit. Yeah. If there will be a rule of law, the church must adjust method. Don't say I didn't tell you. You just call somebody out, embarrass the person, was my own. Because people don't know they are right. Being a pastor does not give us license to do anyhow. Are you following what I'm saying? Okay. Look at it. Jesus said in verse 16, go and call your husband. And come either. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, yes, thou as well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and whom you have now is not your husband. All these King James, sometimes they call him. In that says thou truly. We will soon change. <laughs> the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place that men ought to worship. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh. When you shall neither worship on this mountain. He said, I have not brought religion. This is how they used to do it. And we used to worship on this mountain. Let me tell you something. Let me give an example of our fathers worship in that mountain. Oh, we caught this brother in the heart of immorality. We called the brother out publicly. Man, no use for example. They would say not true. We called the brother out publicly and say, Today, we find brother so-so and so-and-so in the heart of adultery. We send you out of this church or we suspend you. You'll sit at the back. Will it get better? Guess I didn't. Rejected. Nobody will go and greet the person. Say, don't shake hands with him. Don't stand by him. Don't greet him. Don't look at him. Don't stand beside him because he's gone. As the blood of Jesus finished. As the blood finished. As the blood finished. We were on campus. Okay, I had finished. I had left campus then. I had left campus then. And they, they called me for a meeting. I said, there's this guy. They said, yeah, he called for a meeting. All this round meeting. And I saw the girl. I knew there's fire on the mountain. And said, this guy, say, he went to touch the girl. This, this, this. narrated the case that I shot. I sat down. Ah, my heart was beating. Call him out in church. We hereby place you on indefinite suspension. Stand outside. Um, this, this, this. You are not among the saints. This. Listen to what I'm saying. I went with tears the following morning at a place called White Wall on the U campus. I prayed from 6 a.m. till 5.30 p.m. The moment, just for him, the moment I sensed an oil of joy, I got up. 
Then he called me. He said, Pastor, I can't tell what is happening now, but I just sense peace. Can we still hold people in our prayer? For their, that is the real Christianity. It is easy to somebody who is dead and say, No, oh, you, you are dead. You are a fornicator. Your life is finished. You don't know that you are already betting Ishmael, contradicting what Jesus did. You can bet two extremes. I just, a guy just gave his life to Christ. A cultist. A cultist. Three of them entered my room. Around past 10 at night. Knelt down. I said, we want to give our life to Jesus. I was too happy. I said, ah, join our church. Young Christian. That was still trying to disciple. Started trying to ask a sister out. That one said no. He left the one who was dating for a because they were having sex. Then went to another one. That one said yes. It was in Bible study. They brought the matter. No call. No counseling, no confirmation, nothing, no investigation, no teaching, didn't know his level. There's a guy here who is trying to defy our girls. This, this, this is from the pit of hell. Everybody rise up. Stretch your hands now. We pray that exactly the prayer that God will put out his light. And I watched everyone, Father, including the one who is masturbating, put out his light. <laughs> and I looked at the guy. And he was looking at me. And I saw tears drop. I knew we had lost him. I knew warfare had started. Before they could say benediction, he had picked his back. You know, there are people who felt more loved in their occultic practice than church. Ah, I for me. How do we, how, how more can we communicate this? Act? How can they love each other more in witchcraft coven than church? We judge, we criticize. You want people to shut down, never to exist again. That's not Jesus. I don't care how anointed you are. From that moment, you are not representing him. That's not Jesus. Nobody can intimidate anybody. Nobody can. Not let anybody intimidate you. From that moment, that's not Jesus. You're on your own. There's a way your selfish interest and your personal prejudice can infiltrate your ministry and you make a doctrine out of it. If you are not kind, you are not loving, you are not gracious, you are not standing for Jesus. Yes, if any man be found in any offense, let them with the spirit of meekness, with this emphasis on the spirit of what? Meekness. Jesus met people in their lowest point and never shut them down. When he met this woman, she became a preacher. There was another one caught in the act of adultery. They allowed the guy to go. They were going to stone her to death. Maybe they don't like her. She don't agree. She said, you can't go give that guy. We'll kill you. Jesus said. And you know those that are trying to stone, him, to stone her? Religious people what we call Christian now, everybody carries stone. They pursue. Instead of saying Jesus loves you, and when they saw Jesus, they excited. They said, so today we'll kill out your presence. And the one who knew all things said, let him who doesn't have a sin cast the first stone. We now saw, started dropping the stone. Started dropping the stone. And when she was left one on one with Jesus, the only one who didn't have sin, Hebrews 4.15, for we have not an high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, seeing that he was in all point tempted like we are yet without sin. Only him was qualified to stone her. So she was looking at, you can judge me now. And he said, I condemn you neither. What he said then is still what he's saying now. If you know the things I've done, if any man be in Christ, is a new new means no past experience it is not the message of lasciviousness it is the message of redemption if you sit down wallowing in the memory oh if you know what i have done i've, I've aborted oh, i've done this so oh, i'm not qualified to marry a good man because i've brought his bath your issue is not lack of forgiveness for yourself your issue is pride you feel too big to have made a mistake that's why you can't forgive yourself who are you not to make mistakes? Even angels fell. 
Angels saw women and lost it. You made a mistake in the past. He has restored you. Accept his forgiveness. Accept his love. Get back to where you used to be. You know you used to have a calling. A wind came. You can't even find yourself again. Get back in the calling. A wounded soldier is still a soldier. And as you stand with him, he's the bomb of Gilead. It begins to heal you. Minister strength to you. Never let anybody send you out of God. Don't, don't, don't ever let them. Is that clear now? Yes, stand your ground. Stand your ground. Everyone Jesus met whose life had bad problem, contradictions, he restored them. He restored. The essence, that's the essence of this message. Restoration. He said, I will give you the years that the locust has eaten. I will. Let me tell you this as we close. It is never too late for a fresh start. Never. It is only over when you say it is over. It is never too late. I want all of us to bow our heads this morning. If there's anyone here, and don't worry, cameras are not on anybody's face. And you have been thinking, is it possible to have a fresh start? Can, do I have hope? Can this and that happen in my life? Is there a possibility for mercy? And all that. If you don't mind, I'm not calling you outside. Just stand where you are. And let me agree with you. You have seen some contradictions before. And now you are saying, you know what? This is it. This is it. Thank you for standing. Thank you for standing. Please don't be shy. Don't be shy. All of us seated here have our own things we are dealing with. Nobody can shut you down. Nobody can look down on you. Everyone has things that God brought them out of. Everyone has things God brought them out of. Just lift your hands to Jesus and say, I accept your love. I accept the extension of your love. I accept it. I accept it. I accept it. I believe, I believe that you are my savior, you are my redeemer, my help, my strength, my buckler, my high tower, my hiding place, my hiding place. I know you are giving me a new beginning. I know you are giving me a new beginning. Who is it that says a thing when God has not said it? Who is it that says a thing when God has not said it? Who is it that says a thing when God has not said it? Who is it that says a thing when God has not said it? I know, Lord. I know, Lord. I know, Lord. And accept his love. Accept his love. If you have been a born-again Christian, he has not thrown you out of the fold. And if you are just giving your life to Jesus Christ now, whether you are upstanding or you are seated, you can please stand with them. Stand with them. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. You have been introduced to the Jesus of the Bible for you to know him for who he is. He is love personified. Is not one judge who is waiting for you to make mistakes and finish your life. He is love. That is who he is. If you are making that decision, say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe that you came to this world to die for my sins. I believe that you died for my sins. I also believe that you rose on the third day for my justification. Today, I confess you as my Lord and Savior and I accept this gift of eternal life in Jesus name Amen I see grace for fresh start I see grace for a new beginning strength strength even the places you have been mocked before grace to walk with your shoulders high and strength for you in the name of Jesus let the hand of God rest upon you. Be blessed. And you are kept in the hollows of his hands. You will not drop. You will not fall off his hands. In the name of Jesus. It is done. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may please be seated. Let's give Jesus a big, 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 big hand. I don't care how people fight this message. I will not stop saying to people that it is not over. And Jesus is not done with you. It's not over. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a big hand again. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we bless your holy name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We thank you. 
All right. What an amazing Sunday we've had, right? Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. Um, let me give this news. Um, the committee in charge of the building, they have told us that um, they will be done with um, the first phase, meaning that by the end of this month, we start fixing our columns. Huh? Please come. Let them see you. Please, architect Evans. <laughs> it feels strange, right? <laughs> An architect of those school. <laughs> All right, so, so, I mean, the work is going, right? You are promising the church of the living God. <laughs> Let's give them a big <laughs> I'm not trying to rope him. All right, so. Good thing is that by next month we should be ready to move into our facility. So. <laughs> Some of you are looking at me and say, ah, Posu. That is what they have said. And I believe. By the grace of God, our 10 ACs are here now. So now let me explain. I understand the reason why the clap is coming from there and not from here. Because those ones are working. But this one, they will perfect the setup by Tuesday. So that's why you are not clapping. So you can clap now. <laughs> All right. So I think just six are up now. And I think the heat has gone down, right? So I can't wait for the 10. I, in fact, I'm telling them that we need to pull like 15 here. That's a good way to overcompensate. The what heat has ah. done to us. Let's, everybody will be coming with duvet. <laughs> See, I push you, I'm cold. Cover yourself. What do you mean? <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let me make this announcement. Across all the centers of Sphere of Life Church, I am not a pastor in any of our branches. So we have the church pastor. And one of, the, one of our daughters in the children's church walked up to me after a workers' meeting and said, Apostle, now that you are saying the resident pastor is around, are you going to stop preaching? I said, No said, because I'm blessed by your preaching. So I said, no, I'm around. I'm around. I mean, one of the girls in the children's church, I said, my God. And that was so touching. All right? But we have a resident pastor who is in charge of all administrations, follow up, many things are touching the church structure. And um, he has resumed. This is his first service here with his beautiful wife. Please help me welcome Pastor Tumisha Para. All right? He and his wife. Please come forward as we officially receive you at Sphere of Light Church. And Pastor Mimi, please join me here as we officially receive you at Sphere of Light Church, Abuja. Um, um, like I said to the workers today, um, this year makes it 10 years of um, strong followership. It's been following for 10 years. And, and that's not small thing, right? 10 years. And um, let me tell you something. These men are more loaded than they look. They are heavy men, you see. And we honor you, we love you both, and we respect you. We do. Please, church, let's stretch our hands towards the pastor and his wife. Um, that the hand of God will rest upon them. That the grace of the Lord will um, keep them. And they are strengthened. Fresh anointing, fresh grace um, will rest upon them. By the mercies of the Lord. Let the hand of God be strong upon you. Let his glory overshadow you. Receive the strength and the wisdom to lead this great house. Grace! In the name of Jesus. Grace. Fresh oil, fresh anointing, fresh impartation. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because it is done. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's give Jesus a big hand. Please. Church, you may be seated. Thank you. Um, so, I say, what is the implication of this arrangement? It simply means after service, I can pick my Bible and go home and leave you and your pastor for counseling. Is that okay? Church, if you are not talking, I say, eh, Apostle, what do you mean? Church, is that okay? We had a deal, right? Agreed? <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> 
From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear my body the marks of Christ. Trouble him. Stress him. <laughs> That's your pastor. So those who are getting married, those who are pregnant women, all the necessary structures, you know, that needs to be implemented, um, the man for that is here. And we're going to see those things happening in no distant time. Amen. By this time next month, our TV is up and running. Our TV is up and running. So, um, Pastor Jumoke is here. We will be heading the operations of the television ministry. Also, one of our resident pastors who have pastored in Moro before. Please come out, let them see you. All right? So, yes. So, she, I'm just calling my team. I say, oh, yeah, come down. Fall back, fall back, fall back. All right? So, let's give them a big hand. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. But I'd honestly like to request um, that there is a pastor over this church, and I, I tell you in all honesty, um, anything you will hear me say is what he will say. These are men that have been tested and trusted. Amen? Um, so please, and I'd like to request the same honor you accord to me, give them. Because we honor them. We do. We do. We don't joke with our leaders and everyone connected to us. God strengthens you. In the name of Jesus. May I quickly pray for those who are presenting their tithes? Um, those who are presenting their tithes. If you are presenting your tithe, please be upstanding. Um, if you have not been in the custom of giving tithes, I'm not judging you. I'm just going to say that tithe is a way we honor God with our resources. Okay? Simple. Father, I thank you for your children presenting their tithe. That your mighty hand will rest upon them. You are blessed with the dew from above, both online and on site. You are blessed with the fatness of the earth, and you are blessed with plenty of corn and wine. You have all that pertains to life and godliness, and you will not be stranded. God will give you insight for wealth multiplication. We give you all the praise, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right. For the first time, and of course not the last time, to take the offering and other proceedings of the service, Let's receive the resident pastor of Sphere of Light Church, Abuja, <laughs> Pastor Tumite Apara. Hallelujah. Can we give Jesus a big hand once again? I would like us to rise on our feet this moment as we stretch forth our hands to God's servant. As we speak forth blessings, he has blessed us tremendous. Have you been blessed this morning? SLC, have you been blessed this morning? Come on, go ahead and bless God's servant. Pray for him. And the Lord will strengthen him more and more. Where that came from, more light, more wisdom, more illumination in the name of Jesus. Come on, pray. In the name of Jesus. He will be watered in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, what do we say to Apostle? Apostle, we love you. And there is nothing you can do about it. Give the Lord a big, big hand once again. And you may please be seated. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, no worries. Um, even me, I'm glad and excited that I'm here. <laughs> that I can sit down and listen to Apostle live and direct. Hallelujah. So we are in this together. Can we celebrate Apostle once again? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, church, I want to celebrate our online members. Can we just celebrate them and tell them we love you and there is nothing you can do about it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to take announcements very briefly. On Tuesdays in this same auditorium, we have a Bible study. Um, if you have been attending Bible study, can I get you shout hallelujah? And if you have not, shout hallelujah. All right, so those that have not been attending Bible study, you have been missing so, so much, and you need to repent. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So on Thursdays, we have our prayer meeting also by 5.30, but for us in Abuja, it's strictly online. Hallelujah. On Monday to Fridays by 6 a.m., we have our prophetic prayer contact, um, PPC, with God's servant, every morning on YouTube from Monday to Friday, 6 a.m. 
Do well to connect, join, and you will be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Now, this morning, we have some very special and amazing set of people in our midst. And these are the people that are worshiping with us for the very first time today. So if today happens to be your first time in SLC Abuja, wherever you are, we'd love you to just rise on your feet. We want to recognize you. We want to welcome you. Wherever you are, just rise on your feet. Rise on your feet. Church, can we celebrate them, encourage them? Wow, 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 wow. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Wow, wow. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So you're welcome to Sphere of Light Church. This is Sphere of Light Church. And God has given us a mandate in this house to go raise God's end time armies. And this is what we are busy doing with all that God has blessed us with. Hallelujah. In this house, God has also made four covenants with us in this house. The first is the covenant of life. Nothing dies in our hands. We also have the covenant of ease. We do not struggle to get results at any point in time. Thirdly, we have the covenant of God's sure mercies that speaks over judgment. And last but not the least, as you have experienced here this morning, we have the covenant of praise. Hallelujah. And God has said to us, as often as we praise him, we will not lack reasons to praise in him. And the reason why I'm saying this is, as you have stepped here today, you begin to see this covenant at work in your lives in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. All right, so there are um, ushers standing beside you that will give you the package. Um, we we'll also love you to scan the barcode so we can get your details um, and reach out to you afterwards. Hallelujah. You may want to shake hands with them, those beside them, and welcome them to church. Hallelujah. And you may please be seated in Jesus' mighty name. All right, church, can we rise on our feet this moment? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I would love the media to project the account details for offerings. Hallelujah. So let's package our offerings. If you are giving via um, transfer, the account details is going to be on the screen. And if you are giving via cash, the protocols would ensure that the um, basket is um, beside you. All right, let's package our offerings. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the privilege and the grace to give. Where this is coming from, it will not cease to flow in the name of Jesus. Much more than this, your people will have to give. You will never be stranded. You will not beg. You will not borrow. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. All right, let's send the um, offerings electronically and let's give um, via cash. Hallelujah. It's time for us to take our affirmation, and I want us to do it with excitement. Are you ready? Ask your neighbor, are you ready? What's the person's response like? All right. Join hands with that person in this moment. Make sure the person is smiling. All right? Make sure the person is smiling. No frowning. Yeah, this is no frowning zone. And I know something about church. When I say praise the Lord. But when I say praise the Lord. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. There's always a response. When I shout, you would. It is just normal that you shout back. So we're going to take the affirmation together. Hallelujah. We're going to say it on the top of our voice. So I'm going to call and we're going to respond. Are we re respond? Are we ready? Are we ready? We are sphere of light. An atmosphere of God's influence. We love effortlessly. We sacrifice selflessly and pray earnestly. We are a people of great faith, strong vision, and excellent spirit. We are the epicenter of God's praise upon the earth. We have a lifestyle that is consistent with the authority of scriptures. We believe when the Lord said to us that we are a city in every city. This is the house of pruning, forging, and making of giant. Hallelujah. Now we're going to do this with excitement. Are we ready? The shout of a king is amongst us. And what do we do? We rejoice. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have a great week ahead.
Welcome to an encounter with the Spirit, Word, and Prayer through the prolific apostolic and teaching ministry of Apostle Femi Lazarus, lead pastor of Sphere of Light Church Global. It is his vision to raise God's end time on. God has not called you to prove you are the best. He has not. As a leader, you are a broker of gift and talent. So, brace up for an 